Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, today, I wanted to talk about something that uh, has kind of been on my mind uh, ever since I came back from visiting my mother and father-in-law up in the Spokane area. You know, and as I've mentioned, my wife has been studying for the bar exam, and so um, I was trying to uh, do my part to, you know, give her uh, as much time here at the end to really just cram and crunch uh, as much studying as she can into the last couple weeks. And so um, I up and took my boys up into the Spokane area so that they could spend time with their Nana and their Papa and their aunts and their cousins. And while there, uh, my mother-in-law has a, a lake house uh, on Deer Lake. It's awesome. Uh, you know, it's right on the water. So you can imagine how just relaxing that is to just wake up in the morning, sun's out, and just look out over, over the water. It was such a great opportunity to really just unwind, spend some time with my boys, have some fun in the water, and also have a chance to spend some time with my mother, mother-in-law and father-in-law uh, without my wife present. And overall, the 11 days that I was there was really great. Uh, we really did get to spend a lot of time. I got to bond with my boys a lot um, and we really, we had a great time. But there was one conversation that took place while I was there that just has really stuck with me. Because as a child, I grew up and I really, I struggled in school. I felt like I didn't have, and I don't mean like in the academic sense, I mean in the social sense. Like I grew up and I feel like I didn't have the, the tools, the social skills to really fit in. But yet I was an extrovert. I, I loved other kids. I wanted to play with other kids. But I was constantly picked on, made fun of, you know, and I, you know, over time I ended up really developing a low self-esteem. And I would come home and, you know, to be honest, my, my mom and my dad didn't really know how to help solve this problem. They didn't have the tools to teach me to handle kids when they're picking on you, when they're bullying you. And back then when I was a kid, you know, bullying was not the, the big deal that it is today. There, there was no zero tolerance policy. There was still the meet me on the playground after school and I'm going to kick your butt kind of stuff. And yeah, that, that stuff happened to me. And even though I was actually a pretty strong and tough kid, physically, I didn't have that self-confidence to really defend myself, to um, stand up to the bullies. And so what really stuck with me in this conversation that happened at the lake house is my father-in-law was talking about a friend of his who has a son who has Down syndrome. And I believe he said that uh, this kid is 12 years old and the father is a, is a former Navy SEAL. So with that perspective, you know, a Navy SEAL is trained to be just really tough to, you know, uh, not focus on emotions, just focus on, you know, being focused, being strong, mission, you know, staying uh, on point with the mission, mission critical stuff. And now he has a child with Down syndrome. And what my father-in-law said is that this father wants to teach his son to be tough so that he won't be picked on by bullies nearly as much when he goes to school. Now, while that is a noble cause, what my father-in-law said is that the way that the dad is teaching his son to do that is that he is teaching him to not express his emotions. And so when he gets hurt, it's don't cry, don't cry, be tough. And when I heard that, it triggered something inside of me. It triggered something inside of me because I feel like in this day and age, and I know enough now as an adult, is that if you do not allow your kids to have an outlet for their emotions, where are those emotions supposed to go? Who do you think the kids are in school that are picking on the other kids? I'd be willing to put money on the fact that these are the kids who are at home and when they cry, when they get hurt, their parents say, suck it up. Don't cry. It doesn't hurt. Now look, I'm not saying like with the ticky tack stuff, you know, whatever. My kids cry over some silly things sometimes too because, you know, whatever. But when they're really hurt, whether it's emotionally or physically, if we can't let them express those emotions in front of us as their parents, 
where do you think they're going to express those emotions? And so even though in this situation it's a little bit different because this kid has Down syndrome and I know that, you know, that, that kid is going to have his own set of challenges growing up. I have a special needs child. Life is going to be different. It's going to be tough for kids with special needs. But it still nonetheless really upset me that a father would be squashing his son's emotions. And so let me ask you, is this something that your parents did with you? Think about who you are as an adult. Think about society and like toxic masculinity and the fact that men don't talk about their emotions. That had to come from somewhere. Did it start when you were a kid? Did it start in your own household? I just want you to think about that. Where did that really come from? And, and what is useful in that? How was that useful to suppress all those feelings? Now, look, I, I'm not planning on being a Navy SEAL or some special ops kind of guy where being able to suppress your emotions and be more robot-like and machine-like. I, I don't aspire to be like that. I want to be a well-adjusted individual in this world that is well, uh, you know, well acquainted with his own emotions so that I can function as highly as possible in this world. So I can be the best husband that I can be. I can be the best father that I can be. And I can be the best friend that I can be. I can be the best son that I can be. I'm not trying to be the best special agent in the world. I have no interest in that. And so for the, you know, 0.0001% of people who want to do that, that's great. Go down that path. But for the rest of us, suppressing our thoughts, suppressing our feelings, suppressing our emotions, suppressing our pain is not useful for living the most full life and impacting the people that you love the most around you. to the best of your ability. It doesn't serve you. So if you have kids and you're saying these things to them, I want you to take a step back and think about why that is. What are you trying to achieve by telling your kid, don't cry? It's not that bad. It doesn't hurt. What are you trying to achieve? Instead, I challenge you, as I am trying to do myself, is to acknowledge your kid's pain. It does hurt. Who are you to say that it doesn't? They're hurt. Acknowledge their pain. And the best thing you can do after that is tell them it's going to be okay. If my kid falls, he hits his shin, whatever, I tell him, ooh, yeah, man, I'll bet that really hurt. I'll bet that really hurt. The good news is, though, give it a minute or two, it's going to be okay. All they need from you is assurance that whatever pain they're feeling is going to be okay. Because that is going to keep them moving forward. That's going to keep them focusing on the fact that pain is temporary, that we can overcome it. And isn't that what we want? So let me know in the comments if any of this resonated with you. If your parents were like this or if you're struggling with this as a parent yourself, let me know. Because I think that it's high time in this society with where we're at today that we start changing that conversation that we're having with our own kids. Thanks for listening. See you guys.